assistant director of the Oregon Screams Horror Film Festival. Uh, I'm here with Rodrigo Moreno Fernandez, director of Strings today. Uh, he has contributed a very interesting horror short to the festival, which is going to screen on October 22nd at the Dalles Sunshine Mill Drive-In Theater. So if you ever want to see your film on the classic drive-in screen, this is going to happen. It's going to be great. So, Rodrigo, uh, can you just uh, give us a brief synopsis of your film Strings? Sure. Uh, thank you so much for, for having me here. It's a Absolutely. pleasure to, to be interviewed by you. Uh, Strings is a little bit of... Um, I'm not, I'm not sure if, if you are familiar with Goethe's uh, book, uh, Fausto's Tragedy. Mm. It's based out of that. It's basically making a deal with the devil to obtain something uh, in return, right? So it, this is a girl that uh, wants to be a guitar player. Uh, and then uh, she steals a guitar from an antique shop and, uh, and then tries it out at the local pub. Uh, she's not good at it, so she gets thrown out. <laughs> and then... Uh, uh, a figure appears there, uh, kind of, kind of the Mephisto figure in, in Fausto's uh, tragedy, uh, and then she makes a deal with the devil, where the devil asks her to give out three souls in return of strings for her guitar. Mm. Uh, that's basically it, right? A lot of things happen uh, at the end that I, I won't, I don't want to spoil it, but uh, right. but yeah, but basically that's that, that's the premises of our movie. Nice. Well, I love that. Faust is so classic and there's been great adaptions. Um, what, what inspired you to make this film? I've always been uh, a fan of those type of stories. Mexico, I'm, I'm originally from Mexico. So Mexico, it, that's the kind of story that we take uh, very uh, early in our lives. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the devil is always going to get you. The devil is, is going to do this or the magic uh, is going to uh, get you this. Uh, so during the pandemic, I started rereading re a bunch of uh, of books that I've, in my early childhood that I've read. One of them was Pedro Paramo. Pedro Paramo doesn't have to do anything with our movie, but the way they talk, the way they talk with spirits, kind of gave me an idea. I said, well, maybe we can do something like that. Obviously, it's not as good as Juan Rulfo's uh, uh, little book, but, uh, <laughs> but, but a good adaptation towards the, the U.S. with music and this and that. In those days, I'm, I was trying to relearn. When I was a kid, I used to play guitar. So during the pandemic, I bought a little uh, amp and I started practicing. And I noticed that it's hard when you're old. It's hard to relearn everything. So who who, who wants to uh, play Mary Had a Little Lamp right. a, a, bunch of, a bunch of times until you learn the chords and this and that and everything? So... Um, that's what I, or I was aiming for there. Kind of get me the idea, like, what if somebody makes, obviously it's been there before, but in a different, in, in, in a way like Pedro Paramos talking to, uh, to ghosts or to dead people, what if we can translate that to this story and, uh, and, uh, and find out about the desire of, 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 of being a guitar player. My movies are all been like that. It's like wanted to be somebody wanted to, um, what happens when you try to cut corners and, and how are you going to fail every time that you do that? Totally. Well, that sounds very interesting. And I love how uh, I hear lots of stories of people who are uh, thinking a lot during COVID and they're bringing some of their own experience into a film. But this is the first one I've heard that is so metaphysical. This is a deep reflection you've had. And you're mm -hmm. like, this is not uh, just rooted in reality. This is something that is uh, a sort of a deep desire of yours that's that's narrativized and you're kind of working through it through the film. I think that sounds really great. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's going to be awesome on the big screen, man. That's going to be you. crazy. We, we uh, so, yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead. Sorry. Well, uh, I just wondered if you learned anything from this experience. Yeah, obviously, the, the um, we call it Mexico Moraleja. It's like the, what you learn from the story, right? And it's it's been a ride when I was writing it uh, it was such a pleasure being able to express some of the emotions that I had in the, at that time but um, I guess the biggest thing that I've learned from this one is to be patient um, we've always been able to have our cast ready we've always been able to film but in this time we took our time to cast the right person to find the right cinematographer to find the right locations uh, to make sure that everything was set in pre-production. And then in production, we took our time. Uh, we m wanted to make sure that it was what light scene and we had all the, the elements that we wanted to have. 
during the production. And then after that, I guess the hardest, that, 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 I always divide my process into uh, parts. The first one is being writing it and producing it and then uh, uh, filming uh, the movie, post-production. All that is real fun. And as you know, this is one of the biggest joys that you can have as a filmmaker is being able to uh, to express yourself and in, in, in whatever you imagine seeing on the screen, right? But then after that, that's the hardest part is to be patient again, to make sure that you submit to film festivals and that you are waiting for the results, but you don't compromise your your own uh, film in, in, in such a way that you want to, uh, because you want to get into film festivals. Some, some festivals are going to accept you. Some people are going to like your movie and they'll program it. Uh, the, the trick is to be patient. So I, I, I would say patience will be the, the biggest thing that I get from all this process. Awesome. Well, that sounds so great. You took time on this one. It looks fantastic. It's going to run great. And uh, wow. Well, so, I mean, it seems like you learned something very valuable from this production, but what's next? What are you working on now? Um, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm having two scripts uh, finalized. Uh, one of them is a feature that we've been trying to make uh, for a long time. Um, and the other one is a short film. I already, I'm already talking to the same producer, uh, Jesus Benavides, which is the, I'm sorry, Jesus Trevino, who's, which is the one that produced um, Strings and my, my two other uh, films. Um, and we are looking a little bit on locations. I'm trying to take my time again, patience with, uh, with the script. Um, we are looking at locations in, 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 in West Texas, the film, a little bit of the scenes there. I got inspired a lot seeing other films and film festivals that are on locations and I'm moving around a little bit the characters. Um, and we're developing the story. I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm, I take my time writing it and then send it to coverage and see if, if there's it's good enough. And if it is, then we'll start filming. Um, and that's it, man. I mean, that's, that's, the, the, that's the plan next year we might be able to film either the feature or, or the short. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, you're not slowing down. You got lots of stuff uh, in the works and I'm looking forward to seeing a lot more from you, man. Thank you. Well, man. Uh, thank you so much for doing this interview. I'm looking forward to screening this on the 22nd on the drive-in theater in the Dells. Thank you so, so much for having us there. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to see my movie in your festival. I, I hear great things about it. Thank you. Awesome. Well, have a great rest of your day. You too. Thank you.